loosen up your muscles so that you wouldn't get injured. <laughs> so what happened was I, I ruptured my lat. Let's go, Lord help me save my soul. I'm trying not to lose control. I'm trying not to lose control. But I might have to let go. A little bit of mobility this morning. Uh, before we get further into the video, let me uh, remind you that we do live streams most days, Monday through Friday. I'm trying to do some on the weekends for people that are members only of the channel. 2 and 4 p.m. usually is when they start. They typically go for about two hours. So if you want to know when those start, subscribe at the notification bell. You'll know when all that goes down. Um, but today, I got this clock from Gym Next is the brand. I was looking for a clock for my gym. There's a lot of them that are similar to this one. Rogue makes a couple different clocks, which I am a big fan of Rogue. I have a lot of Rogue stuff here. Pretty much this entire rig here is all Rogue stuff, but they didn't have very good reviews on their clocks and the clocks didn't really have as many features as this one did. So Jim Next is the brand. Um, I'll put a link uh, down in the description box below. I don't have a code for it, I'm not affiliated with it, but it doesn't come with a remote control, which you'd be like, why is that a benefit? Well, you get to control it with your phone. The other clocks out there like this one come with a remote and you have to control it from the remote. And I think also a lot of the other ones were battery operated which I didn't really like. But anyway, so they have an app, it's called the Flex Timer. And with this, you connect to the clock via Bluetooth. This little blue dot shows up when you are connected to it. And then from there, I can go in and adjust how, what type of timer I want to use, whether it's a standard or an interval or a Tabata or every minute on the minute, something like that. But the other thing that this clock had that other clocks don't have is the ability to show your heart rate on it by connecting to a Bluetooth chest strap. So I have my Polar heart rate monitor chest strap on right now. Anyways, I'm going to set up a timer to do two minutes on and we're gonna do 15 seconds off. So what I'm gonna be doing is different stretches, different mobility things that um, I uh, like to go through to help loosen up my joints and get everything good to go for a workout today. Um, and probably the biggest issue people have when it comes to stretching and mobility is that they don't hold the stretch long enough. <sighs> the research shows that you need to do at least a minute of holding a stretch for it to have any, any real benefit. So I'm gonna make it a two minute stretch to actually have to actually make a difference in your tissues. Oh. Okay, so it takes up the whole thing. <laughs> I wish they could just put the heart rate number right here so it was just constantly showing. That would be, that would be nice. Put that like that, and now that our timer is going. Like I said, I want a minimum of, a minimum of a minute. <laughs> in the stretch. So I'm gonna put this right up under my butt, like right under my butt where my hamstring and my glute connect. It's gonna pull deep into that spot and it's just gonna help pull my hip forward. So I'm getting a big stretch here, but I'm also getting separation from my hamstring and my glute in there. Um, and then on top of it, you try to flex your glute and your hamstring at the same time. It'll just work those tissues underneath that compression. And what that's going to do is just help separate those muscles so they can move more freely so that you can get like lower into a squat more comfortably. We've been in it for about a minute now. So, but yeah, you kind of just want to Try to relax as much as you can. I haven't done this in a while. Um, it's something that I want to get back into doing and I figured I would save it for when I made this clock video. It's gonna be painful. Like you're going to feel 
uncomfortable with it digging in there, but over time doing it, I used to do this on a daily basis years ago. All right, we're gonna switch legs. We got 15 seconds to switch. getting stretched while your back glute and hamstrings getting compressed just slowly trying to lean into it more remember to flex your butt get all that going but doing this is going to keep all your joints nice and loose it's going to keep those muscles separated from each other it's going to prevent an injury prevent a muscle tear because that's typically what happens one muscle gets caught on the other and makes things a little too tight and causes issues. So now we're going to go in the front, which is an awkward place to put the band right up in you, <clears throat> but it's going to be kind of the same position. We're going to have this leg out front and we're just going to let it dig into that hip flexor. So we've got a lot of compression going on through the hip, through the groin, and we're just going to try to get as low as we can here. And it's just going to slowly pull into that spot. I'm trying to flex my hip flexor by matching that I'm trying to lift this knee up off the ground. It's going to be painful, but the pain will fade when everything relaxes around it. Right up in there. without any, without feeling any tightness up here in your hips. We're gonna put it up here between our chest and our front delt. So it's digging deep into this spot, separating our front delt from our pec. So from here, we're just gonna kind of try to flex our pec, flex our front delt. And it's just gonna try to separate those muscles with that compression that it's putting down in there. Um, you know, you can move your arm out front like you're doing front raises. You can kind of move it like this, like you're almost doing a fly. If it feels a little intense, back up a little bit. But yeah, you kind of want to just keep that arm moving, keep flexing these muscles so that that band can just kind of keep digging in further and further. Because 
like going like this, it's not, it's not like it's weightless. Like I'm pushing the band with my, my delt and it's feeling it, it's getting tired. All right, other side. This was something that I learned though uh, long ago when I was doing CrossFit primarily. This was a lot of, a lot of uh, stuff that was really common that we would do. You know, if you showed up to the CrossFit gym early, you would grab a band, try to take every opportunity you could to loosen up your muscles so that you wouldn't get injured. <laughs> so what happened was I, I ruptured my lat on this side. This tendon completely came off of my arm. But I was, I was doing deadlifts. And we were doing, we were maxing out deadlifts. The reason why I sort of blame CrossFit for the injury is my lats were very sore from all the fucking pull-ups. What was it? It was a CrossFit max day, I think is what it was. And I was just working up in weight on my deadlifts. I think I got, I was like just over like 500 pounds and was picking it up, was on my way up with it. And when I got to about right past my knees, it j this side of my body just went, just like dropped. I still had to hold the bar, but I just dropped the bar. I was like, what the hell just happened? So I went home and uh, it was just burning in pain the whole time. But the lat tendon was completely torn from my humerus. So it was torn for like five years, but it was still functional. I didn't go back to CrossFit, but I could still use it. Decided to go in and see if they could reattach it. Cause it was obvious that it was detached. Like there was a huge gap behind my armpit. That's the thing that's interesting about tearing your lat is uh, the muscles around it can, can make up for it. it. Can get strong enough that you really won't notice a, an issue. All right, and then we're gonna go overhead. I'm gonna block my arm from rotating in by putting it on the band like that. And then we're just going to step out. This is a good stretch to do if you have issues getting in a, a front rack position, like a, a, a clean position or a front squat position where you're holding the bar and your elbows are up. So I ordered some more stuff. <laughs> Never ending ordering more bullshit. All right, we're gonna get this other side. Yeah, that feels pretty good. That's way back there. Man, that heart rate flash is so quick. <laughs> I wish that was changed. I mean, so far, I mean, the clock is, is, is still, it's better than any other clock. It's none of the other ones do that at all. Okay, that is it for the band stretches. I'm gonna put this back on my handy rack. I'm gonna just do a dead hang from the pull-up bar, but I wanna have a decent grip. I'm gonna put these straps on. That's not bad. Just slowly working to do full body weight. <laughs> okay. So a clock, like I said at the start of this, I mean, it has things that none of the other clocks have the ability to do. Specifically the heart rate thing, which um, ended up not being as cool as I thought that it would be, <laughs> but um, still, it, it's, it's something that none of the other clocks can do. Overall, I would say that this is a very solid clock for your gym. I wanna put it above this mirror, above my computer here. Um, and just mount it right above the mirror on the wall, but I gotta figure out where I can get power to it. I know there's a plug that's right behind the computer, but I don't want to have a random cord just dangling down like that. So I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do. 
on this particular clock has gotten a lot of good reviews on different websites, different garage gym type of websites. So um, I'm glad that I went with them and that we've got it. So, so yeah, that's it. I'm going to get on with my day. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to leave a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all that stuff. Come to the live streams, come ask questions. If you're confused about something, come ask it. I'll try not to make fun of you too much if it's a dumb question, but <laughs> there are no dumb questions, right? No.